I remember vividly that day, three years ago, June 1st. It's a rainy day like today, and it's kind of hard to imagine that somebody you love deeply just take away like that, like an object. And it's cold, the room, despite the fact that it was a hot summer day. And because he told me, no, no matter what you do, remember to be a kind person and try to do good things. Knowing that, he will be proud of me. And knowing that, if I make some marks in the world, he, he should be happy. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Lydia here. So if you're new to this channel, in this channel, I just usually share some of my tips about how I completely changed my lifestyle in the past few years by building a healthy routine by going to the gym and also by reading more books. In today's video, I just want to share some of my raw feelings about the loss of loved ones and grievance. Today is June the 1st, 2021. Three years ago, my late grandfather passed away. So this video is more about the feelings that I want to share with you guys. I think the loss of a loved one is something that everybody might have shared at some point in their life. So if you are at that stage, I hope that you find a way to manage the loss. So 2018 was an important year to me. And I lost my dearest grandfather, who is a very important male figure in my life. I talked to a therapist back then in 2018. She said, if you lost a loved one, it usually takes two years to heal. So now, almost three years later, the whole world looks so different, especially after 2020. I think a lot of people have experienced some sort of unexpected loss, unfortunately. I feel extremely fortunate for 2020 because I didn't lose anybody due to COVID. And if, if you are watching this video and if you did lose somebody, I'm sorry for your loss. Hopefully the feelings will pass and you'll be able to move forward in your life. My grandpa grew up in a remote village where there are not many people who can actually break through this hurdle if you're born into not a very wealthy kind of situation. But he's top in his class, got admitted to the top universities in the country, studying maps and computer science. I, I didn't know that that's even a thing like 60 years ago. I remember when I was a kid, he is a professor at a university and he's teaching database and data science. I always have uh, so many questions as a kid. Whenever I ask him like, what's data science, what's computer, how does it look like? He almost always very happy to answer any of my questions. I think that sort of triggered my curiosity about the world. He taught me maps, geometry, telling me that there is this figure called Turing, the father of artificial intelligence, who have a Turing assumption. And best of all, he always made me feel secure and safe. He never talked too loud or scolded me even once. The, the scariest part of all as a kid was whenever he sat me down and said, let's talk, you know? Let's talk when I was like eight. One time I got 92 out of 100 in a maths exam. And then he's like so seriously said that you shouldn't get this uh, low score. I don't like, it's a very different type of mindset when you grew up in an Asian family. And also it's true, the average of the class is 97. So yeah, I gave him that. Best of all was he always have beliefs in me. Unlike my mom or some of my other protective family members, he never had a single doubt about me being able to independently live well on my own. He sort of just had beliefs in me and he always believed that my world should be bigger than my imagination. He was, he was long in bad health when he passed away. We can say that he has lived a good life. He passed away at home. I remember vividly that day, three years ago. It's a rainy day like today and it was seven-ish. I was lying in bed joining this conference call because work. I received this message from my cousin. He said, oh, grandpa passed away. Everything else became very vague, like in memory. I remember the train, the ticket that I booked right away, the email that I sent out to my boss and the team, the condolence I received from my friends. I remember I arrived at home. I saw him for the last time. He's in bed, no longer with us anymore. Family members were surrounding him. I think everybody in the family was sort of like, don't know what to say to each other. I remember the image they took him away. That was the first time probably I saw a body bag. I feel like, no, that's not my grandpa. It's kind of hard to imagine that somebody you love deeply just take away like that, like an object, like, you know. And it's cold, despite the fact that it was a hot summer day. 
My emotional brain didn't even process that message at that point in time. I went on to work the second day and went back to the funeral like a week after. It just totally didn't hit me until last year when COVID unfortunately has brought sorrow into the world. Last year this time I sat down and tried to write down something in my journal about my grandpa. My tears just couldn't help to, you know, like, it's all over my keyboard. Maybe it's true. It takes two years for you to clear everything, for you to process everything, for you to restart your life again, and for you to mm, really embrace the emotions. Fast forward to today, I come to a realization that there's some power in the grievance. The life lost, the only thing I can do is to try my best to live my life going forward so that his genes, his energy, his courage, his resilience in life can be seen through me. Because he was a man pushed his way through from the bottom of the country, and because all of his stories, I remember he told me about climbing up mountains to just to reach the school, figuratively climbing several mountains to reach the school. He still loves studying. He still loves gaining knowledge. And because he was someone who's strong. Oh, I wish he didn't get into the habit of smoking. I remember when I visited one of his college friends, he told me that he's like top in the spinning game. The only problem he has is smoking. And that's the reason why he passed away. And because he's so smart, he got elected to the top 10 universities six years ago. I was always joking with my friends. I was like, if it's me today, it would be equivalent as I got into Harvard at the age of 16. And because he told me he was always curious, and because he told me he always trusts people. He trusts people that usually people have good intentions. And because he told me no matter what you do, remember to be a kind person and try to do good things. Yeah, it's a kind of like a rambly video. I don't know if anybody is going to watch this. If you are still here, I'll just share some of my perspective. Throughout last year, I think with COVID, the sorrow the whole world is experiencing, I've actually gained some new insights. I learned to switch my thoughts. In the past, I always think that losing him feels like I've lost part of myself. I try to learn to switch into, maybe it's a new strength that I gained. Very unfortunately that he left the world, but because I was loved by him and protected by him when he's alive, in my imagination, he's always watching out for me. I try to remind myself to make good decisions and try to think what advice he will give it to me if I don't know what to do. And I try to behave every day because now it's not only about if I, I, I tell him, I feel like he will know <laughs> whether his granddaughter is trying her best. And I usually give myself a pat on the shoulder whenever I've overcome some difficulties in life, knowing that he will be proud of me. And knowing that if I make some marks in the world, he, he should be happy as well. I, I figure losing a loved one, like everything else that seems to be negative at the time, well, losing a loved one is definitely negative, like breaking up, losing a job, rejection. They all can be channelized into a strength and turn into energy. It's, I don't know what to do as well. I'm not a therapist. I just want to share with you if there's some unfortunate event happens, you can pass this and you will believe yourself and channelize the energy into whatever you're doing. You will push through this. So at the end, I want to take a moment to remember him. I know that even though he has left me, left the world, he's still always present in my heart. And I will try my best to carry forward his courage, his kindness, and his curiosity to watch the world with me. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, please subscribe, and you can also follow me on Instagram. I will share a lot more about Hong Kong on my Instagram. So hopefully this video will be helpful for you, and hopefully, no matter what you're facing, I believe in you. You can push it through. You can fight against it. I'll see you next time.